Hi everyone, my name is Denise and I'm a teaching artist at the Armory Center for the Arts and I'm here to talk to you about how to make a fabric mask at home. There are many styles of masks, some that require a high degree of sewing skill and some that do not. I have chosen one which is simple, fast, and one that can be made by hand or with a sewing machine. The mask that we're going to talk about is this one. It looks like this. One of the things I like about it in this particular style is that I can adjust the ear loop so that it fits tightly. Um, if you're using elastic, you can have a similar feature, which is fine, or you can have stationary elastic. The main thing is, though, that it covers your face completely and that it fits tightly on the face. It should be made out of cotton fabric, and I do recommend that you wash the fabric ahead of time um, as the fabric may shrink in washing. This particular style also can have many variations where you can incorporate a nose bridge, you can incorporate a pocket for a disposable filter, and that's also really great. It also is a very good style when making masks in bulk because it doesn't waste a lot of fabric and it is fast and can be made in an assembly line. What you're going to need is cotton fabric that is six inches by nine inches you need two pieces. So in this case, like so. And the pattern is going to face itself. If you have a piece that perhaps is long and skinny, you can leave it like this. So this particular piece is six by 18, in which case I would just fold it in half, like so. If you have a piece that's 12 by nine, that's fine too. No need to, fold, to cut it in half, merely fold it. What I would then tell you to do is iron your fabric very well. Um, and then I'm gonna have, tell you to fold down your seams on either side and iron them. So it's basically just folding over the fabric about a quarter of an inch on both ends and ironing them into position. If you have the long skinny piece, you only have to do it on the one short end. So these are happening only on the short ends of your fabric whether it's the two pieces together, whether it's the long strip, or whether it's this particular one, it's the two short ends. By folding it over and ironing it, it's gonna reduce the bulk and it's gonna make it easier for you to sew through. It's also going to make it easier for handling the material. And ironing really is a very helpful thing when sewing. Once you've done that, it's merely going to be a straight stitch down the long side, so on this one, right down here, and on the other side, just like this. So basically, you've created a two, which you then turn right side out, like this. If you had one that had a small end, it basically is a pillowcase. You can see there's no opening on the one end. So those are your options. I would at this point then iron it again. If you wanted to put the nose bridge in that I had mentioned earlier, you can use a twisty, a twist tie, like a two inch piece of one from something that we've purchased, or possibly a pipe cleaner, also about two inches. And you would sew that in at the beginning into the seam up at the top um, and just put it right in there, stitch it right onto that seam like so. And then when you invert the fabric, it's gonna actually be in there. Um, if you decided you wanted a pocket for say a disposable filter, you have a couple options. You could do that at the beginning where you actually put a pocket right onto the right facing of the fabric and stitch it on so the filter can go on. Or you could wait until you're at this stage, put a pocket and merely just sew straight through all the layers of fabric and that's okay too. Once you're at this point, you're gonna again iron the fabric very well so it's very flat. And once it's ironed, you're going to fold the piece of fabric in half to find a center line. And because the fabric is hot, it's actually gonna hold that crease a little bit and you'll be able to see it. And then you're going to accordion your fabric in to that center line. 
So if you look at it from the sideways, it's literally a piece that's then folded and accordion down. And the same thing on this side, accordion folded down. And then I would re-iron this. The ends are open, which is fine, because when you attach your bias tape or your ribbon or your elastic, it's actually going to finish the ends as well as attach. In this case, I'm going to use a bias tape, which is about 18 inches long, which is going to lay right on top of that fabric and get stitched straight through. And it's gonna look like that. And now this end is bound, as well as my ties being attached. And you're gonna repeat the other on this end. And it's gonna look something like this. The long threads are then tied into knots or bows, depending upon the distance from your mouth to your ear, and you can tighten them accordingly to make it tight. If you want to use elastic, you can sandwich it in between the fabric and stitch straight through, allowing for loops, which go around your ears and function the same way. If you only have a short piece of elastic, you can always add a piece of fabric onto the end to give yourself a little bit more length to then be incorporated into your mask. Um, don't be afraid to experiment. You could also have a long piece of elastic, maybe like this, which gets sewn on exactly the same way as the bias tape and then knotted on either end to allow for adjustability. Um, I do think the adjustable ear loops are very important as the mask needs to be comfortable so that you're going to want to wear it. Um, I also recommend that you really do make more than one per person per household as you really should be washing it after the, you use it during the day. Um, and having multiple will certainly make that easier. I would suggest washing it in a washing machine, but then I would really hang dry um, as opposed to putting it through the dryer as it might shrink. If you want, you can even hand wash them. I hope you're all staying safe and that you're well.